I bet you're wondering how I got here. Well, it's been a long way, but here's the story. In my younger and more vulnerable years, before everything seemed awry, welcome back to Project Zomboid. Welcome back to pain. As a child, I greatly esteemed the career of the noble carpenter. Naturally, Christ and his earthly father were carpenters, and it seemed a profession fitting to anyone close to earth, and doubtlessly a profession of great utility. Carpenters, after all, build the world and everything around us. They fashion the intractable tendrils of nature into clean right angles. For me in particular, what made the career of a carpenter so attractive was there's just something so novel and ingenious about a tool belt. Everything is accessible at the reach of an arm. After all, a wise old woman once said, the secret to happiness is collect something. But now as an old man, the concept seems just as novel as it did when I was a youth. And so, I'm collecting everything. If nothing else, the knock event has made the world of Gerald Williams much smaller. I collect potatoes inside of me. I collect nutrition. I collect nails off the ground and I put them all in this box. It gives me great joy when things that are the same are near each other. I don't like it when things that aren't the same aren't near each other. And so now, being cured of my cold, I'm also collecting fitness. 60 minutes of sit-ups. Who could protest? Welcome back to Project Zomboid. Now over the last few videos I haven't really emphasized weight but it's starting to drop pretty low. I started off underweight, but I've lost around 15 kilograms since I started and I'm now emaciated. If I lose about 14 more, I actually start to take damage and then I'll just die. Now our stats have improved since the beginning, but we're not particularly good in any one thing. Fitness and strength as statistics still prevent our town runs from being very prolonged. Sprinting doesn't help us much, only to escape from fights. We're certainly not very sneaky yet, but we're getting there. Nor are we very good at combat, soon we will be and our carpentry stat is weak as compared with what it could be. Farming doesn't really matter that much. If we had mechanical and electrical skills, we could get better cars, but it's gonna be a while till we can do that. And while I certainly entertain the possibility of taking a car, I think it would suit us to get in one high loot run to Muldraw. So cured of the common cold, and with some newfound combat abilities, we can make our way back into town for what looks to be a decent run. We need to take Muldraw before the deep freeze of winter, and if we can, settle into one building. Using the snow as cover is our best bet here. While I want to avoid fights, I also want to take out individual ghouls. If there are too many, they'll start to gang up on me. And three down here, two, three, three, and we're safe. But it appears as if there's nothing on these ones. Nonetheless, we've cleared out part of the woods. It's groups like this that prevent me from taking this area entirely. And if groups play off each other, they'll start to join as one. Just the type of situation I need to avoid. We can make short work of one. But again, playing as a genetic dead end has its disadvantages. Where a stronger man could burst through the doors, I'm forced to sneak and check for company. They've taken the area. Only one, but each one is an alarm. And they'll signal the others if I let them. That makes four. Another out. A silent takedown. And thus we slowly chip off the warehouse until it's back in my hands or overtaken. Looks like this one's a, a bust. Well, this one wasn't meant to be. And though frustration gets the best of us here, we need to remain patient or we'll die. We need to keep our wits about us. Or we wind up like the undead. Each day, though it seems I had so much time at the start, is now ticking on. But for each step I take and each one I kill, that's one last monster I'll have to kill tomorrow. The nightfall brings more cover, more hell raising, beta blockers, and safe passage into town. Covert operations. Luckily, no action goes unrewarded here as it does all improve my sneaking. And every step I take makes the odds of my next trip to town the more successful. But one false step and I'll knock over the beehive. And so I tread with caution, and I strike surely, retreat decisively, and know when it's time to walk away. Almost no opportunities in any of these homes. Crowded roads are commonplace, and there's so few opportunities out here, and so many more close shaves. It is almost completely impossible to get into town with these stats. There must be a way. There must be a way. But what if there isn't? Finally, a day of some decent light, and with it some chance. But every day they replenish. They return in droves. There must be a way. There's just a trail of blood where I've taken them. No more than two or three at a time, though. Even this is too many. You can't let them stand side by side like that or they do gang up on you. A real shame, but it's time to go home. This day is lost. Every horde spawn is another kilogram 
kilogram of weight I can kiss goodbye. More slowly than I'd ever want, I take him out. Oh, we do find another holster and some ranger clothing. This is nice. We need to keep track of daylight, though. We're starting to lose more as the year goes on. And if I wake up in the middle of the night, I waste time and I lose more weight. Only about 12 more kilograms to go before I start to expire and every opportunity stolen out of my hands. Still, repeated action, when performed with great intensity and focus, yields superhuman results. I don't need sleep. I need levels. I don't need breath. I just need to sit in this goddamn chair. I'm a real man. I eat worms. I sit on the ground, and I put my arm on my knee like this. I hit bad people, and I get results, and I take off other people's shoes. Gerald Williams might be the world's worst human being. Except Worm Man. Finally, a day where we have negotiated the living hell around us, and we have maybe one group in front of the warehouse. Oh, for Christ's sake, we've finally done it. The warehouse is not filled with zombies, and I think I can board up the windows now. Are there any outs- there are probably a bunch outside. Uh, at the very least, we can remove the broken glass from the windows. I need to make this place safe. I bet I can do it, too. Nope. And they're all in here again. Fuck. Gerald Williams truly was born to suffer. And whenever he kills an enemy, ten more get up to take its place. It's like the punishment of Sisyphus, doomed to, to push a rock uphill forever. It's time to formulate a new plot. I truly think we're gonna have to cut it down to the wire in terms of weight loss this time. Without fitness and strength, we'll never make runs back into town. And prior to the fitness update, the most reliable way to gain strength was by pushing a tree. We don't really have that option anymore though. So I'm gonna just build a lot of fixtures I would have built anyway, and in time it should get me stronger and more fit. I have more ideas for turning this place into a fortress, and so through days of back-breaking labor, we can finally build a safety column to the other warehouse. This will all take an extremely long time. Do you want to see me dismantle this warehouse? There. That only took about three days. Three days of back-breaking labor, and it got us only about halfway to carpentry level four. Almost everything in all of these was useless, and I'm still losing losing weight at 46 kilograms, I'll give us about a month and a half of weight left. And as for water, we have what's left in all of the sinks at McCoy. We still have several more warehouses, in which I actually haven't seen any of the loot. Not that I expect much in here, but is there anything? And nope, just one metal bar and one lead pipe. It's technically it's better than nothing. And as for the rest of the crates, nothing again. I think that's every single crate in three warehouses. There still is one remaining warehouse at McCoy, and I think this is where I left a lot of my good tools. And a hunting knife. The only stealth weapon. And a damn good one at that. And that unfortunately does it on McCoy. No dice on a sledgehammer. All the original cars had no key or battery, and it's still too soon to hotwire. And now a new opportunity. Our potatoes have bloomed. We have six plants, and we'll harvest some for seeds and wait longer, but for right now I do want to eat some of these. Harvesting two and gaining another level in our farming skill. Now at farming level two, we'll probably do better with plants. Twelve fresh potatoes. That could probably save me some weight and hence a little bit more time. And though I'm performing back-breaking labor, it's ultimately gonna make me more fit, fast, and strong. It didn't save me much weight, but probably a little bit of time. We can finish off our constructions and fortify our outer perimeter, expand our lodging, and prepare to build onto the other end of the lumber mill. Alongside this, I'm paving the way for safe transport. Even if that means constructing a skywalk. And under the cover of snow, we construct our column. And after all that hard work, we finally reach carpentry level four and in a good time for the winter. We can finally build a rain collector barrel, which is important. I'll put my first one right over here. Hopefully the first of many. The last of our time is reserved for morning sprints. I think with one more level and a bit more stealth, we can safely go back into town. And I'm running out of options here. Simply put, I'm getting desperate. The only thing that's really gonna make a bang is this pistol. And I have only eight kilograms left to lose before I start dying on the spot. I don't want to attract zombies into these nearby woods. It's, it's my escape route. But they keep re spawning by the large warehouse every day. I need to attract them further into town, and I need to get them away from the main restaurants. So here we go. Not for the aiming experience, but it should bring them around from all sides. Now it's time to cut and run. And wow, it turns out that actually wasn't that loud. So then this pistol gives only a local area radius. That'll still be enough. Oh yes, it will. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. We have to gather up a large horde and send them off one place. We can take them over to the other end of town and then it's gonna be time to hop a fence. There are just so many. I'm not sure anyone was ever meant to play this challenge. Absolutely everything is overrun. It's, it's impossible. I can't even stomach the thought of taking back the 
town. I mean, when I lead a horde through, they just go right back to where they were. I think unless if we get an emergency vehicle and set them all on fire, there's no way we'll ever take back Muldraw. I may not like it, but I think it's true. It's not worth it, and it's only gonna make me more tired every time. No kills, no accuracy. Almost every direction I've pursued has been a dead end. I'm getting extremely desperate, and I'm gonna need to plant the last of the cabbages. I can use the last of the water in these fountains to feed my plants at first, but the process of watering is becoming longer and more time-consuming, requiring each trip, and we're running out of water altogether. Our rain collector barrels are still dry. Dry, and we'll need to resort to the last of the water. Each sink has only a little bit left in the tap, and it takes me a whole day of back and forth just to water the crops now. Exhausting both sinks, I'm now using toilet water, and staying up late into the night to make trips to water the plants, all of which cost me more weight. After a long day and thirsty plants, I have no other option but to go to sleep. We exhaust an entire bathroom's water supply, and we move on to one of the last bathrooms in here. We water the last of our seedling cabbages. I keep the last of the potable water in my own water bottle. And now we have some luck. At long last, seedling potatoes. We can harvest them all. This should significantly improve our farming skill as we go. And along with that, another set of seeds for the next generation. And 20 potatoes, more importantly. They may not have a lot of fat, but they do have a lot of carbs for us. I can't wait on the last plant, nor do I know why it didn't give seed. But this should be enough to replace our last generation. 60 seeds and 27 potatoes, it's time to eat now. A full 27 potatoes in a row. And just pray that this makes me, uh, gain weight. It took an, a, a, it took an astounding 21 potatoes to make myself stabilize in weight. And I'll eat the last ones for good measure, but no weight gain here. In the meantime, these cabbages will grow, but I think I need to leave them here for a while. And since I'm well fed, it's time to take antidepressants. Now in the middle of the night, it might not seem right, but I think I truly have no more choice. I can come back here to harvest these cabbages, but that's about all that it's worth. I won't be able to plant food fast enough to gain weight right now, and I don't think that I have the water supply to sustain it. I can bring a gas can with me, a few other essential items. If Mul draws an impossible quest, then my only hope is out to the west. And so under the cover of night, we travel through the woods. Now, despite the fact that I had no leads in this section of the map, it's really my only choice. The choices of land in Muldra are so spare and few that it doesn't make sense to bang our heads against a wall there anymore. Only in the north is there land, cars with which to experiment, and a general chance of gaining weight and putting meat on my bones. The best analog is probably being lost at sea, to be surrounded by so much water and thirsty. One good sign is that it seems as if the sun rises are happening early. We might have started off earlier in the year than I thought. Light snowfall might be falling as rain in other parts of Kentucky. But still, after such a long odyssey, we're not ready to fight. And we are starting to freeze. And we're in danger of getting another cold. On top of all that, we're finally encumbered again. We need to stay calm. Panic is as deadly as the enemy. And a close shave might be all we can manage. We're going to be fighting tooth and nail for barely any resources. What's this? A car out in the middle of the woods. Maybe a good sign. It's locked, but we can change that with this thing. There we go. I have company, though. Not an ideal situation, but we'll have to leave this for now. That'll take some investigation later. We can escape in the woods and clear out this clearing. It used to be a beautiful place, but now a valley of moans, a memory of what used to be. Now a shattered visage of the past, a compilation of our aspirations, everything we'd lived for, lay motionless. It's been a long journey and it's time to rest. But what this place lacks in material, it makes up for in water. And now for a feat the likes of which only Worm Man has accomplished before. There is a small town to the north here, and this fence brings an opportunity to break up any threats. We can use it for the last of what it's worth, but it will be enough. With a bit too much nostalgia, I face this next part, as we tread in the footsteps of where Worm Man once tread. Our first house of many. It's heavily guarded, but it's possible. Under no normal circumstances, circumstances would I do this. But this time, I have stealth, as well as an opportunity. I can fight them one by one and draw them into these woods. Rain turns to snow, snow back to rain, over and over. Seeing at night, however, is an impossibility. Like it or not, I can't even go into town at night anymore. The snowstorm is getting worse, and only early in the morning is there enough light to make our way back to town. And so once again, we use the cover of the snow to fight them one by one. Only about four left guarding this home, but they're sure to attract company if I leave them here. One, two, three. He took my knife. Stealth here. Four and five. I told you there would be more. We'll take this one out. Let her come at the window and she knocked me. A sixth. We're getting better with these stab. We gotta back up. Yeah, that one would have tried to get me too. Seven. The coast is clear. We can finally make our way into the house.
ketchup. Uh, many carbohydrates, many, many more than I was used to. It's gonna make me sad to eat it, but that's a lot of carbs. We can eat all of this, but let's see if we can get it into one big meal. These homes are extremely valuable finds, but beware claustrophobia. A sight for sore eyes, but we still have a lot of work to do. I think I'm just going to eat all of the ketchup at once. We need to sustain our weight somehow, however that might look, even if it is tomato. And we've sustained our weight. Kettles, matches, not what I need. I need consumables. We can still drink this pop. It might give us some opportunity at weight gain. Not really, but there is white wine as well. 481 calories. No macronutrients. I don't honestly know what that will do. I don't want to risk being inebriated right now, but later on we can come back for this. What in the bedrooms? Oh, nothing but toys. What on the bookshelves? Carpentry for- no. For beginners. I already know all that. Electronics magazine, somewhat useful. Not really, and I'm a slow reader as well. The TV, however, we can disassemble. That's valuable experience. And now the world around us is covered in a thick blanket of snow. Any down jackets? None. Anything in the bathroom? Some antidepressants. Beta blockers? All useful. But that's about all we get for now. Again, disassembling everything. And if the coast is clear, there's many other homes in this neighborhood. Only one group of zombies over there. We can enter the shed. And it contains an empty gas can. We brought one already, so... So it's not really useful. I can't fight these groups at once, but I can take them out one by one. I can open a window and another one. One. Oh, that looks like it's hit on my weapons. I have nothing left. I just have to pray for the next house. And so what of this home? Hunter magazine. A rotten avocado contains fat. It'll make me unhappy. Canned tuna. Forks. A bowl. Eventually useful for fruit salads. And no luck on a down jacket. It's about all I can muster in here. This house was a waste. I can run them along each house though and get into this last one without them knowing I'm in here. I'm safe for now. I'm safe for now if I move quietly. More coffee, this is good. We'll need it. A tea bag as well, not by much, but it is something. No ice cream, no fats. And a fanny pack. I needed this. It is something and how to use generators. This is extremely valuable. I can eat this avocado. That'll bring me back up to better weight. More canned tuna, and that'll put more weight on my bones. I got most of the town, and I can head back to the farmstead. This trip turned out to be worth it after all. And we're still not out of the woods yet, metaphorically speaking, but I think we have what it takes. Well, I think that that's all for today. We've managed to keep some meat on our bones. I still have the dream of someday getting back into Muldraw, but it's certainly not gonna be anytime soon. We're gonna need to prove ourselves in the wilderness first before we can head back to McCoy. We're gonna need to gain weight before we can gain much more fitness first. I think that's it for today, an unusually scenic end, but I find this playthrough to be an immersive escape, a world I can turn to, and I, I hope you learn at least something about the locales of Project Zomboid. It's certainly a game where if you are, uh, if you want to get any good at this game, you need to know where in the world to go, but I think it's getting dark now. I need to go back inside to sleep in my chair. That's all for today. As always, uh, big thank you to the AA support group. God bless you people. God bless the AA support group as always. I hope you enjoyed. My name's Ambiguous Amphibian, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye